This week on OpenFOSS Training, we'll be installing VirtualBox on Windows 10. Now you may be asking yourself, why would you want to install VirtualBox on your Windows operating system? Well, VirtualBox is software that pretends to be hardware. What this allows us to do is create an environment where we can test new operating systems without jeopardizing our current install. So that's why we're going to use VirtualBox to initially start out testing and playing with Linux to teach you the basics in a way in a safe way that will not jeopardize your install and when things are more comfortable we'll move forward and show you how to actually install it on hardware so you can test it at its fullest performance so let's head on over to our Windows machine now for this, we're going to need the VirtualBox software, as I said earlier. And to get that software, you head on over to the web address on the website, or showing on screen right now. And please do note that that D is capitalized in downloads. So it's HTTP colon stroke stroke www.virtualbox.org slash wiki slash downloads. And if you do not capitalize that D, you'll get an error message during downloads or when you try to go to that website. Now, when you get to the website, you'll see that you have a host of options you can choose. We're gonna choose the first one it presents on the website, which is VirtualBox for Windows Hosts. Go ahead and click that download and let it download. Now on my system, I've already downloaded this and I've also taken my machine offline just to give it more performance for the moment. So when you, when we get over here to our downloads folder in File Explorer, double click VirtualBox. Now, as I said, I have my machine offline and you'll get this error here, which saying smart screen can't be reached. So if you're offline like I am, go ahead and click run anyway, because you know where it came from and you've got a fairly good idea it's safe to go ahead and run this software. And I'm going to minimize File Explorer just to get it out of our way. And here we are, Windows Installer is getting ready to run. And our first screen we come to, VirtualBox, you know, is a welcome screen. Just go ahead and click Next here. On your next one is Custom Setup. You could go through and customize this as you want, which I'll leave that for an exercise for the future. But for now, we want to keep it simple. So let's just go ahead and click Next. And then on custom setup we're given a few more options let's go ahead and leave those and click next now here is an important warning now since I'm already offline doesn't matter but if you're online right now and have a download going you'll want to wait until that download is finished before you click yes or else your download will be interrupted and possibly you'll have to start completely over so next screen we're ready to install so go ahead and click install now during this, we're gonna get a pop-up for user account control. So we know we started this, we wanna install this, so click yes. But that's not the only pop-up we're gonna see during this. We've got one more coming here that's gonna ask us about trusting extra components being installed by VMware, or not VMware, VirtualBox, I'm sorry. And here we go. Would you like to install this device software? Now on this screen, you'll notice there's a checkbox to always trust software from Oracle Corporation. We can go, we could leave this checked and anytime you install something from Oracle, it's going to be pre-approved to install in your system. So me personally, I'm gonna uncheck this because I wanna see what else it's trying to install. Now in this case, it's trying to install a USB driver. Now here we've got another one. This one is trying to 
install a display driver of some nature. So I'm going to uncheck again and click, you know, install. I want to show you all what it's installing, but during the install process, you can leave that checked and zoom through this much quicker. Now we have another one. I'm not exactly sure what this one does, but I'm going to uncheck again and choose install because as I said, I want to show you how much this is trying to install during the process. I would encourage you though, when you do the install on your own system, to leave that checkbox checked as you proceed. Now on our next screen we're presented, we're pretty much done with the install. So we can leave this checked and it'll start VirtualBox when we click finish. Give it a moment here for VirtualBox to start up and here we go. We are now presented with the VirtualBox interface and we will dive more into this in the future when we start dealing with how to actually install Linux operating systems inside of here. And I would like to make sure we thank ThinkPenguin at thinkpenguin.com for helping to support make these videos possible. They sell Linux har or hardware targeted towards the Linux market. So if you want a guaranteed experience of being able to run Linux on any piece of hardware, they are one of your best options to go to. And be sure to visit our website, openfosstraining.com, and see what we have planned and where we're heading with things. And also to let you know that we have a Indiegogo campaign running right now, where we're trying to raise money to build a better production system and to get a couple more pieces of hardware to help improve this setup. So visit us at http http colon slash slash igg dot me slash at slash open training and help support us in our endeavors to bring you better content.